said to me the other day, I always walk. I walk, I process, yeah. I think, I'm walking. Always walking, always stretching, always moving. I don't care how, and I, when we were talking about the stuff you said, motivation is a lie. What is up you guys? Welcome back to the number one mental health and addiction podcast, The Hopeaholics. I am your girl, Natalie Eva Marie, and these are my boys. I'm Chad. I'm at Shane Earn, baby. Hell yeah. Brothers. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow us on our socials and wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, new episodes dropping every Tuesday and Friday. Check them out. This episode is brought to you by The Infinity Group. You guys, if you or a loved one is suffering, please call us today. The number is right here on the screen. We are here for you 24-7. Now, let's get into the episode. That's, that's what how, Chad likes to that's do. That's how we do it. Okay. Are we live? Ready? Oh, okay. We're live. Great. Awesome. Shane's usually here. He says something stupid. And then... Uh, <laughs> Poor Shane. Yeah. Just kidding. We can talk all kinds of yeah, crap know, about him because he's not here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He and he can, speak. and you know what? He doesn't watch our, our podcast, he so he'll never know, know we talk shit. He doesn't know. Like, like at least like if I'm not here and you guys are doing a podcast, yeah, I'm going to know if you it. talk shit because I, I watch do. that shit every day. I do too. I watch our podcast. It's good. Like it, it, if you had a podcast, would you watch your podcast? Yeah. Would you? I watched some of your podcasts just to see what I was coming on, and I was like, "This is really cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. You have. To. We're all like, "Yeah, yeah." This it's really cool. Well, no, I feel like why I did I look so funny on the screen? I don't, I don't know if I like seeing myself. All the time. I even brought up the thing when you were talking, yeah. you talk about later because I was yeah. watching it, and I loved the comments because I thought everyone was wrong in the comments, and I actually made a comment going, "Oh, you did? oh you're incorrect. What she's saying is correct." And all these people started trolling me and going, "You don't." No know. way! I, oh, I can't wait to look after. Yeah. They probably they she's not a comment reader. I, I am too. I, I like try to I try to comment back. Oh, you I'm do. trying to get better because I feel that especially with the podcast, it's way more engaging because we talk about, you know, interesting topics and, and some of them people agree with. And the whole point of having a podcast, I mean, the whole point of living in America is having freedom of speech. We don't have to agree on the same thing. And that's the beauty of it. We can sit down and have a discussion and maybe all of a sudden my mind can be changed about a certain topic or perhaps yours on a certain topic. And that's to me beautiful. And the whole point of, you know, coming from different walks of life and being able to sit down and have like a nice, educated, calm, relaxed conversation, because that's how you grow. That's how you learn. And that's how you kind of progress. And so now with me of being a part of, um, the Hopeaholics podcast, I want to engage with more people on comments because it opens that dialogue. I engage often, you know, and on top of that, I like I it takes time, though. You know, I, I respond to every every DM. Um, he does do a very good job with that. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Personal. Yeah. I want them. I mean, it's 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 time consuming, but I, I do a lot of it like when most people are sleeping. So which is ironic considering you told me yesterday, you're like, oh, my gosh, you and Jonathan are always like you comment and you. you oh, like, yeah, but and I'm, I'm like, not good yeah. at doing that on other people's pages. I, I well, forget to I forget to like I'll scroll through it and I'll be like, oh, that was cool. Sometimes and then I don't hit the and then I don't hit the like, but hit the fucking like button, Chad. Well, not only that, I see you pop up on my goddamn feed yeah. uh, all the time. You know, you, you'll be, you you'll be like you'll, button? You're, no, I'm not. See what a I rude. I followed you back. I followed You're you. so rude. You better have. I did. You didn't follow me. Yes, I hey, do. I follow that. you all the time because <laughs> you'll be like walking down the street talking. You, you, you. Wait, hold on. This is like. A, <laughs> wait, hold on. This is a moment. Chad's turning fifty. If you don't mind me Congrats. asking, how old are you? I'm fifty. Are you fifty? Okay, so the, you guys, we have hit a mark. We have two fifty-year-olds right now talking about likes and follows. Yeah. Did you follow me? That's embarrassing. Did you like? Did you call? No, no, I'm just saying oh, that's where we're adapting. at. Adapting, you're adapting. It's, it's today's Good. society. Oh, okay. You got it. It's cool to like and follow. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If it's the right person. Well, I get pissed <laughs> off in the sense sometimes I'll post a, a yeah, whether it's a photo that. or a reel, and Chad will be in it. It will be talking about either like the Hopeaholics or I'll be with him and his wife, or we're at a Christmas party, something where it's like he's physically in the post. And, and he and included in the <laughs> caption and i'm like hey dick can you go like and comment on my oh post my that you're I in i'm actually putting this up yeah us. it's yeah. like it's not <laughs> just like the here? cloud <laughs> that's so great i'm like wow i see it and yeah, then he's okay. in a dialogue oh, how, like, but look at that that's even worse he sees it Maybe he's like, why would you put that up? <laughs> nah, she's Actually, I'm she's pretty been good. really good. I'm pretty about, good. Like, I always make sure everybody looks good. I'm definitely not a hater. Ma, I will ma, make ma, sure ma. his wife looks good. <laughs> um, any of the crew that I, I post, especially 
the guys as well. I try to make sure that everyone will be happy with the photo because there's nothing worse than seeing a, a photo go up and say like, you look fantastic, but the rest of the group look like people are looking over there or people's eyes are closed and I mean, they look like shit. Every once in a while. And my, my wife's going to hear this and she's going to, uh, I'm going to hear about it after, but I don't care. I'm going to, I'm going to throw her under the bus right now. Oh no. Every once in a while, she she will not look at my picture. Like it'll be a photo of her and I, Ooh. and she'll look amazing in it. Uh, and I'll uh, be like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm like, that. that's the one that you decided to post. I'm like, do you not? She did this one story. I was when we were in Italy and I was like, and then she tagged me and then I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to add it to my story. Cause you got the worst possible angle where I was <laughs> twisting and leaning and I, and it was like right here. And I just looked like I was like a fat ass. <laughs> I was like, I've gotten way, you, I've gotten uh, good in the sense of if I want to throw up something, I don't even, I, one, I'll say I'm videoing something or taking a photo or two. I'll say, do you approve? And show Jonathan, and then as long as they get the approved, then I'm like, then I'll have to deal with the, with that, that part, with this. You yeah, pre, you pre warn. Yeah, I sound like That's, a diva though when I say shit like that. Who cares? I mean, but as long like as my wife shot. looks good, as long as my wife. I mean, looks that's really good that, the all photo, that matters. I mean, that's all that matters. It's yeah. like even if I was, no one's looking at you. Ain't dog. nobody, uh, ain't nobody ain't looking no at my looking at you at my belly when I'm leaned <laughs> over like that. <laughs> but maybe they're like damn, <laughs> damn well, how, how did how did how did that guy get score her yeah that's what i mean. that could be inspirational if you can get her I can get <laughs> exactly right? so it's no, actually see, was both a positive they're, they're, we got to yeah. throw the positives on. Sure. I, li I like you man you're right. always looking at the positive like side it. of things optimistic yeah optimistic um but since we are sitting down and this lovely cover is just like screaming at me and I have the author sitting in front of us. I mean, this is a dose. Oh, of shit. Yeah. His book's called A Dose of Positivity. Yes. What the fuck? Hold that thing up. Mm -hmm. And anybody can get it. Yeah. Amazon. Amazon your bookstores. Up. Your camera's over there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I love it. You. She's moving around. You've done okay, this like you know. 900 episodes, and she comes. She's camera. like, "Which camera am I?" <laughs> matches still, your hair. The actually, book matches it your does. hair. There it you was go. meant to be. He there says, hair. "Hair, hair." You almost like it's weird because you said you're from Australia, right? Born in Australia, but you 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 say words like somebody from Boston. He lived in New York. Yeah. No, my, my words are all fucked up. <laughs> like seriously, because I lived in New York like 10, 12 years. Yeah, I do. So some people stop me and go, Are "You from Boston?" Because I say "car," yeah, like, or "garage," yeah. And then I can't How even. Funny. And then I can't even figure out somewhere's like, do I say "massage" or "massage"? Massage. Well, I can't even remember some words I say. They're it's, like it's, a, it's massage. I say massage, <laughs> massage. I don't even know some words Australian. Some and then I yeah, and then living in New York, you know, 10, 12 years, it's just like. What, what part of Australia did you? Uh, live I in? was born on the west coast. Perth, which is the most isolated capital mm. city in the world. And I was born there when there was no internet. It was just like insanity. It was just a lot of chaos, a lot of drama, um, and a hard place to leave. Mm. So I had to kind of make a decision as a young kid, you know, abusive, really abusive background, uh, just a lot of trauma. And, um, which honestly, it's kind of crazy because I had this pivotal moment where it was like either, I mean, let's get deep. Um, at 16, I got kicked out of school. I started using it. I started, the first time I ever got drunk was four. Well, wait, 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 Whoa. before you go deep. Yeah. Uh, I think our audiences and everybody, at least, I mean, I can only speak for myself. You're from Australia. Yeah. And uh, my, uh, probably the question you get all the time is, did you ever box a kangaroo? No, but I watched a, a dead true story. <laughs> true story. I have I have a I have a crazy cousin. I, this is a true story. And there was a fair, and he took me to the fair. Well, my parents were there, and he said to me, he was ten years old on me. He's nuts. And I was twelve, I think, and he was twenty two. And there was a guy fighting a kangaroo in a tent, and I didn't uh -uh. know what it was. And as a twelve year old, ten, I was probably younger, watching these two, a guy, <laughs> drunk guy. No. Get punched and punch a kangaroo in the face. And he goes, if you tell your dad, I'll beat the crap out of you. Obviously, I got back to my dad and I was like, what are we doing? I was like, there's a guy fighting a kangaroo in a tent. And he 
beat the crap out of me. My dad beat the crap out of me, and my cousin beat the crap out of me. Yeah, I've seen a guy okay. box a kangaroo. All right, cool. That's good. That's good. That's that's scary. It it's is scary. scary. It's you don't want to box a kangaroo. No, no, they'll fuck you up. They will they'll fuck you up. you up. They stand up. And yes. They're like, <laughs> and, then, and then if they really want to they can they can stand on their tail well, right they and do. they can kick so they you. stand on their tails and they kick and punch at the same time yeah they're serious it can't yeah. you don't want to mess with kangaroo that's like straight street fighter type it's just ninja move. yeah like it'd be the coolest thing to pull out in a street fight if you're like no, i'll be back there's four of you give me one second this giant kangaroo comes out oh <laughs> you're like who's well, this guy from australia <laughs> Just pounding insane. people. You know jujitsu. I got kangaroo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like you have nothing about on me. About to fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now it's time. Let's yes. get deep. Do you have yeah. siblings? I do. I have a an older brother. Okay. I have a younger brother, younger sister. Oh, okay. Which leads into um. So my older brother was really sick at seven. He was had measles encephalitis. Mm. Went into a coma. So I had to. He's older than me. I had to watch watch him literally walk and talk again. And then my sister was thirteen weeks premature. Okay. So, you know, I, it was my background. We grew up Greek tradition, but do a 23 and me. And I was like, what were my ancestors fucking doing? I'm Greek, Italian, Middle East. I'm a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> dad worked hard. You know, my, my, my grandparents came from Greece with nothing. 12 hours a day. It's back then. It was just, you open your mouth, you get cracked. They didn't know any better. Um, but once I tasted, I got drunk at four. My grandmother got me drunk at four and like killed me. Wow. And how's this? To the, I was blamed for it. That's the the abuse I went through as a young kid. That they That's couldn't. Four. Yeah. So I, my son's six. If you got my son drunk, my in-laws got my son drunk. I can be as spiritual as want, but they're gonna eat out of a straw. Yeah. You hurt my son. I'm a, I'm gonna lay some damage on you. I'll put you on my eighth step <laughs> while I'm doing <laughs> right, it. Right, 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 right. I am making amends yeah, yeah. for the shit I'm doing to you now for fucking up my son. Yeah. So growing up with that, I was undiagnosed dyslexic. Okay. No one picked it up. Back when I was a kid, it was you were stuck in stupid, fixed mindset, right? And the teacher would get me up in front of class and make me want to read or make me read and everyone would laugh at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at class, I was fight, flight and freeze. And at home, fight, flight and freeze. So at 12, it was fight, flight, freeze and feed. Mm. Once I tasted liquor and alcohol, I was like, dude, this is the best. Mm-hmm. So I was a, a really great athlete as a kid, but the problem was, you know, I was a state champion athlete, but um, when I won, my parents couldn't accept me winning because my older brother was sick. So they would shame me. So my mom would say, you're a show off because your older brother can't run. He's not as good as you. Mm -hmm. And my dad would then go, well, you didn't try anyway. You don't deserve it. So every time I'd win, I'd feel this self shame. So I would just sabotage. Wow. So then I hit 16 and the crazy thing is, and I tell people about your purpose and your authentic self, I didn't know, I knew I had talents, but I didn't know what it was. And it came by just chance. Um, I was in a play when I was 12 and cause I did track. The last thing I wanted to do is I was, I was like in the chorus and I thought it was stupid. Mm -hmm. And I would watch for six weeks of rehearsal and everyone's rehearsing and I'm in the back jerking off with this kid. He's a little stoned you know messing around yeah. and the two leads got sick you didn't mean really jerking off right? no okay. just having fun <laughs> he went straight there he did i knew exactly right? what you meant i wasn't pulling off another yeah, kid know, in the back totally. no like... no i was just messing around <laughs> let me read that was either i was messing that was, around <laughs> that was I'm... either new york because they say that <laughs> jerking off yeah jerking off yeah. jerking off no what are you I doing like, i totally stop jerking off he's doing yeah jerking off back there. why are you guys jerking off back yeah, right? there yeah. Yeah. when i was a kid oh terrible right Right? Wow. I <laughs> See, now you're saying, why are you jerking off back there? Hey. Why are you two guys jerking off back there, huh? <laughs> so now you're going to say, oh why are goodness. you messing around? I was yeah. messing oh. around, right? Yeah. I was acting the fool. That I wasn't paying weird. attention. Wow. wow. So the track. AKA yeah. jerking off, guys. Yeah. That's jerking off. So jerking off. <laughs> the funniest thing is the track coach <laughs> said to me, uh, we're going to cancel the play. And the guy next to me said, hey, Mike knows all the parts. And she's like, do you? I said, yeah, it's easy. She's like, what do you mean? And, and I was like, I'll do the part. So I got up. I didn't know I was photographic. That's my dyslexia power. If I see it, I can remember it like that. That's amazing. I, I'm so jealous. And I, I remembered the whole that. play wow. from rehearsals. So I got up and they're like, you get, the lead, you get one of the lead roles. I said, okay. 
And the one thing I didn't realize was I'm not afraid to get in front of people ever. And I didn't realize people feared that. I was like, I'll just sing in front of 500 people and do it. Ah, I realized that was a talent. So that led me into then pursuing acting, sure. pursuing those things. I had the courage because I'm like, these people are scared. I'm not scared. Yeah. And that led me into like making these brave moves. Because I was like, oh, if I can just figure out the technique, I, the other stuff's easy. I'm not afraid to do it. Yeah. And I always didn't realize that when most people say doing comedy or standing up and talking in front of people, I'm like, that's easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't realize, oh, and then if I visualize, if I see it, it's just, it. that's the dyslexia. It just stays in my head. Wow. I, I feel like my it. husband ha must have that too because he's he was diagnosed later on dyslexic as well. But he, his memory is so good, especially with books and things he read. I'm like, how? For me to reach him, well, I also am very, very, it's very different. He's lo illogical. He's a normie. I'm not, clearly. But the way that he is able to retain information, me, I have to work 10 times harder than anybody and reread the same page 750 but did, times. But did he, is he bad with rote learning? Bad with, say that again? So you know how schools designed to make you just repetition through rote learning? It's not actually association. Mm, what do you know. call it? Rote? Rote, you know, like rotation, just like oh, rote learning. Like, like rote Maybe. learning. Maybe. Like where you go, okay, do the same thing over. And That's why school doesn't really work for life. Sure. Maybe. Right? I, I like so, so structured in that do it this way and then you go in life and I've got to deal with you guys. Yeah. You're like, oh, I didn't learn this in school. <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> right? I mean, so, it's school, I feel like it's, it's like teaching you how to balance a checkbook. Well, that would be great. Yeah, and I mean, we look at the system, right? The system's Terrible. not designed to have forward thinking. No. It was designed to keep you stuck in a box, yeah. right? Keep yeah. you caged in. And every time you, you want to express yourself, put your, sit down. Yep. Put your hand up. Mm -hmm. sit, but no, can't do this. No, you grade it this way. And then our, get, our system is created to create employees, not yeah. employers. Yes. Correct. <coughs> yeah. Rockefeller. That's true. Mm -hmm. Look at the Rockefeller. 1900s, put in all that money into the yeah. school system, right? Yeah. So thinking like if he's dyslexic, mm -hmm. He's probably like me. We, uh, we're very good at emotional learning. So if we feel something, we retain it really well. Like mm -hmm. I remember stories. I remember people. I remember when. I remember how. Oh, so yes. if I read it, I retain it. That's him. Yeah. Very, very well where I'm like, how in yeah. the world? Oh, I can Which? remember when I saw people, how I saw them. And that's what helped me survive in America. Because what I would do is I fell into the club business. Okay. And so did I. Yeah, I didn't want to be in the club business. Someone literally, did, I moved to America. How old are you? It's 24. Okay. Were you, were you already partying? Partying. I'd go on and off. On and off? So, so not, weird. Okay. So 24. Before you got to America? Yeah. So you know how I got to America? It's a crazy story. I was in acting school. I moved from Perth to Sydney. Okay. And uh, I went to the, the same school that Hugh Jackman yep. went to. A lot of great actors come out of Australia. Yeah. And... Uh, I had a really, I didn't understand, uh, back then, mentors, things, that's a very American yeah. thing. I had a really bad mentor. And I was in and out of my vices. So I would drink occasionally, not drink, do coke, not do coke. And him, the two of us and a student, he's like, oh, we should go hang out and cross the line with drugs, alcohol, sex. And he took advantage of her. So the next day... I just sat her down and I said, look, and I was coming, the linear process was go to acting school, get an agent, come to America. It was always to come to America. And I said, what do you want me to do? She goes, don't say anything. We shouldn't have been there. I said, yeah, but he took advantage of you. You can't like he, was this a friend or a girlfriend? This was no, it was a friend. This was oh, just okay. a, an acting class. Mate. Oh, okay. So I went to the Dean and I said, look, he practically fucking raped her. What do you want me to do? And he's like, what do you want to do? And I said, he, he can't, he can't be in front of her. She can't go through this. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, well, how about this? If I leave school, he's like, yeah, but you're only graduating. I said, no, no, if I leave, will you kick him out? Just, just say we shouldn't have been there. He said, yeah. So I was like, oh, so my gut's like leave. So there's a clothing store that I used to walk by. It's this famous clothing store called Politics. It's in this place called Pitt Street Mall in Sydney. And there was this Greek guy that ran the store and I would go by you know, catch the bus, that abuse me. Ah, this guy yeah. is doing, go to acting school. Ooh, he's going to be famous. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to ask him for a job. So I walked in off the street and I said, hey, man, I need a job. He's like, for what? And I said, look, I'll be straight with you. I want to save my money and move to America. And he's like, you're just going to come in here and work here and leave. I said, that's practically it. I always say, 
proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Pr preparation meets opportunity is luck, right? He goes to me, calls me on the spot. He goes, you went to acting school. He goes, the next person that walks in, if you sell them clothes, I'll give you a job. I was like, fuck it. I got to lose, right? So a woman walked in and it's a menswear boutique. And I just, it's like, I said to the three sales guys there, and I said, don't say anything. Let me just suss her out. So I was kind of chatting to her, trying to get to like feel her out. And I don't know the store. And I said, hey, just something came to me, acting school, improvisation. I looked at her, I said, are you looking for something for your husband? You know, it's a men's boutique. Your son, she goes, my son. I said, look, I'm just going to throw, throw something at you. Is he about my size? She goes, you know what he is? I said, you know what? Give me one sec. So I looked in the shop window because I know the clothes in the window have to be good. I found my size. I went to the change room. I put on the clothes. I walked out. She goes, I'll take it. I turned around to the shop and I said, now I've got a fucking job. <laughs> so I worked there, right? Mm -hmm. He wanted to make me an area manager after a year, like six, uh, probably a year. I was making a ton of money as a kid. And I was like, no, I'm moving to America. Three days later, a lady came in. I did the same song and dance, right? And she bought a bunch of clothes for her husband because that was my thing. As for your husband, yeah. whatever, I'd train them. That was my that was my little stick, and they would let me do it. So the next morning, I'm really stoned, and we're cleaning the shop windows, and we had a return policy. So if they came back the next day, you give them money back. And it's the, the mall. It's an open air mall, and I see her with the bags for the clothes. No. I'm like, she's returning the clothes. So I said to the guy Al that I work with, I said, I gotta go hide in the back. He's like, what? I said, that chick, she spent like five grand. I don't want to like pay back that money. He goes, I got you because we got paid in commission. So she's knocking on the front window, and he's like, what's up? And she's like, is Mike there? And he's like, is everything okay with the clothes? She goes, it's fine, because she's. Oh, actually, sorry. She said to me while I was in the store. What are you doing in America? What are you doing in Australia? I said, I want to move to America. She goes, you should enter the green card lottery. And I was like, uh -huh, you smoke crack like I do? There's a lottery for green cards? She goes, yeah. And I thought she was crazy. So the next morning she came back and gave me the green card lottery ticket. I sent it in and six months later, I want a fucking green card. Oh, wow. Wow. So check this out. If I didn't stand up for the girl yeah. and follow the right path, the God, God in the universe wouldn't have given me the green card. And that was my seed to always do the right thing because doing the right thing isn't easy. Doing the easy thing is not necessarily right. Wow. That's right? actually insane. Gave me a fucking green card the universe did. Just, and I never met the woman again. Wow, weird. Crazy. Changed my whole life. Yeah. Just by standing up for that girl so she knew no one should ever disrespect her like that again. And I've always followed that moralistic code. I mean, that's incredible, but there's so much more that I get from that story too, is like, obviously you um, realize that you had a talent and a gift, which is where you can stand in front of a, a group of people and not really give a fuck. And that is uh, alone is hard because a lot of people have stage fright, you know? And then you walked into a store, he was like, well, sure. And then right there, clearly you not caring and like, yeah, I can do this. The first person that walked in, you were able to get in front of them without a problem, not stumble, not stutter and sell them what you needed to do so that you can get a job. So it's you're utilizing your talents to get you progress forward as well. Because if you didn't do that and you were just scared and left, then you probably wouldn't be sitting here. Probably wouldn't have written a book. Probably no. may maybe would have moved to New York maybe years and years later. But yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. I love that. So you've got to step into the gap, right? Yeah, you do. Fall into the gap. Oh, that's right? a gap commercial. But it's true, right? No, but you've got to like always tell people. Like people yeah. say to me, look. Someone, someone said to me the other day, when you look at my life, they're like, how do you get all these opportunities? Because I, sure. I, I just step into them. I just don't, I don't overanalyze that inner critic sure. that says I can't. I always tell myself, well, what if I can? You know what I do? I mean, obviously it took me a while to get here, but why not me? Right. Why not? All right. You, I'll get, it's in the book. 2017. Right, it's my birthday, at June fourteenth, and my wife's. We knew we were having a baby. We just didn't know the sex. So to surprise me, she says, she comes home and she goes, "We're having a baby boy." She found out. I'll be honest, I wanted a baby girl. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you why. You know why? <laughs> Girls hang around when you get old. 
boys just want to fight you when their testosterone kicks in. I wanted a little girl. That's true. I'm like, I'm hung out with boys all my life. I'm the youngest of all boys, and I'm the one that's always like with. Throw it down because yeah. you got right. Because I want a little girl. Like she was, she was there for daddy, yeah, yeah. right? I wanted a girl, right? It's a lot of like I'll sure. deal with the emotions. I could deal with this savage, yeah. right? So I'm I have ulcerated colitis, which is an incurable yep. bowel disease. Heal myself naturally, and I'm a nut job. So every year I try to test myself, my physical strength, and it's my birthday and my stomach's not good. So I go to the gym and like an idiot, I'm like, I see how many pull-ups I can do in an hour. The Guinness World Record sure. with a weight vest is like 300 and something. So with a busted stomach, I do like 300 pull-ups and I'm really messed up, really messed up. That night we go for dinner. I don't eat a lot. And my wife's like, are you okay? And I'm like, not really, but she's pregnant. So I don't want to like get her freaked out. So I sleep on the couch and for three days I've had stomach issues. So I was like, oh, you know, so I go to use the restroom. And if you've got colitis or yeah, Crohn's, terrible. you have diarrhea. Yeah. I didn't have diarrhea. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, my appendix burst or my gallbladder shot. So she comes down the stairs. I said, I don't want to freak you out because you're pregnant. I think my appendix burst three days ago. I remember the pain. She's like, are you serious? I said, just get me to the ER. We'll figure it out. We get to the ER, I'm really bad. And I said to him, you need to give me a CT scan. She's like, why? And I said, no, no, I, it's bad. How bad? I go, I can handle pain. I'm an addict. Don't, no, no, it's bad. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I think my appendix burst three days ago. She's like, you don't know what you're talking about. She gives me a CT scan. She goes, if we don't find a surgeon in the next three hours, you're going to die. You're in septic shock. Oh my God. I was, appendix burst. I was like, didn't realize I was just pushing. I thought it was colitis. Cause when you get sick with colitis, it's like being seasick. Oh I'm God. used to the pain. Terrible. No one in my network wants to come. A guy drives an hour and a half away. Turns up this black dude is great. Like like something out of uh like like a Samuel L. Jackson catch, yeah, like yeah. Pulp Fiction. He goes to my wife, I'm gonna lay it to you straight. He's got 50-50 to live. I'm like, what are we going to Vegas here? He's like, his septic shock is so bad. He, he goes, I'm taking out your colon, I'm taking this out, I'm taking that out. My wife is freaking out. I'm like, dude, she's pregnant. Like, you need to just slow down. And I sat with him. I said, you got to just be straight with me here. And he's like, what? I said, can you get me through the surgery? He goes, I don't know, dude. I go, this is what you're telling me. I go, don't tell her that. This is what he said to me. I said, could you do me a favor? He said, what? I said, could you spare my colon? I don't want to wake up with a, with a crap bag. Like yeah. a bag. He's like, I'll do my best, but let me just try and get you through this. Four and a half hour surgery. I was a mess. Seven and a half, eight days in the hospital. They take wow. eight inches off my intestines. Oh yeah, I'm emaciated. I'm all fucked up. Comes in after eight days of the hospital. He goes, I'm just going to tell you something. If you don't take your colon out, I'm being straight up with you. If you don't take your colon out, you got six weeks to live. You're going to die of colon cancer. This is what the guy tells me. I go home. I'm a fucking wreck. I'm like, how am I going to figure this shit out? This is crazy. So I go, I, I can figure this out. I know I can. So I, I, I dive into Dr. Joe Dispenza. Start reading Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I'm like, I can figure this out. Neuroplasticity. Brain. Sure. So I just go deep in myself, start getting up at three in the morning, meditating everything. I start healing myself. I heal myself. I still can't really exercise. The baby comes seven weeks later, seven weeks premature. I'm like, oh my God. I was involved in this restaurant in New York as a consultant. I get hit with three lawsuits that aren't mine. Someone forges my name on these documents. Now I've got three lawsuits, a baby that's seven weeks premature. And I'm trying to heal all my guts. I was like, the universe is really dealing yeah. me some fucking shit. So what do I do? I was like, okay. I was, I don't, I watch things to get inspired, right? And I watch this woman called Ann Trazen run a hundred miles. Mm. And I was like, how did you run a hundred miles? What, what is this? What, what is that? I've never, I was a sprinter all my life. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get up every day, no matter how I feel. And I let my wife sleep. I'm going to push the baby and I'm going to just enter a half marathon. That was my goal. I ran a half marathon with the baby. A year later, I healed up. I ran 30 half marathons in 30 days. And broke a Guinness World Record. And if I didn't go through the pain and the adversity and that, I never would have found my potential. I agree with that. But wait, how did you heal your gut? Mind, meditation, food, fasting, okay? And then lots of uh, deep stretching 
breath work, mm-hmm. right? Cold therapy. I did it all like that. I put it in my book and and nutrition, all nutrition, or you. I, I believe that no medicine. No, I took antibiotics for the bacteria. You have to take right. antibiotics. Yeah. yeah, but the rest of it has nothing to do with it. Deep stretching, pulling all the trauma out of my sympathetic nervous system. Right. Yep. Being present, breath work, and being meticulous. And how crazy is this? I go to the bookstore now, and Joe Dispenza, who I was reading, is on the bookshelf, and I'm right next door. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? Mm-hmm. So I always go, if it feels, I go into the feeling. I don't ever analyze it. And then the universe will provide the crumbs and the information. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So the, you, everyone's going to tell you you can't. But if I feel I can, then I just tap into the I can and then I sit alone and I block out all the noise and I get really quiet. Because they say you do the work in the dark, you shine in the bright lights. 100%. Right? The Bible verse. Right? So no one wants to do the work in the dark no by themselves, does. right? And that's why when everyone's shining in the light, they're like, how? You're an overnight sensation. Ah. Like, no, motherfucker. This person's been grinding. Gr- grinding. Right. Putting in the hours. Right? Chopping that wood when yep. nobody else is no one else paying is attention or looking. So that way when they're shining, it's like, where did they come from? But how many times have we heard the story in the sense? I mean, I know for just me being here for the last few months and seeing like Chad's personal um, story with like how imperative nutrition really is Everything. on the body. Because, Everything. you know, he was going through he ate really really healthy like even when my husband and i first came on as guests and i met chad and shane they're in phenomenal shape um and take care of themselves really really well however then once like we ended up getting on like this my husband's a really big into health and and so am i and because i truly believe health is wealth if you don't have your health you have nothing i don't care who you are it's one of those things and you can t- you can holler at me when you're not able to get out of bed and you don't have your Holla. health anymore <laughs> you know what i mean True. and then that's when you start being like oh my gosh or when you have a uh crippling migraine all of a sudden then you start thinking about oh my gosh please go away i felt so good when i didn't have like just a minor headache you know no, certain things you, you don't realize those things when they start to pop up but then with food alone I mean, I had my own instance in 2021. I always struggled with like gut. That's why when you said the that Colitis, yeah. I totally understood what you meant because I went down a rabbit hole of trying to figure out like what I had because I was always in the ER at some point, um, like just a distended stomach and so much pain, not knowing like do I have an, am I having appendicitis? Like what's going on? Do I have colon cancer? Because my dad has colon cancer. So I was just like going through all of these things, and then finally I was like, you know what? I'm so tired of these doctors telling me this, that, or the other. I finally got my bl- like an extensive blood work panel that I went researched googled and said I need to get I want to get this done instead of like your generic you're fine you're good because that's what I would get all the time and it came back that I had celiac disease and so I was like oh wow that's crazy I mean it really came back I had an autoimmune so immediately I'm like I'm dying <laughs> you know that's where my head goes and then it came back with celiac and so all I had to do I mean I was crushed because I'm Mexican Italian that's all we do is we we love to eat we love food but I removed gluten and, and wheat. And you're good. The inflammation, I dropped like 15, 20 pounds in like not long. Um, no stomach issues whatsoever. Um, no, like I would have to like lay on the bathroom floor or anywhere just because I was in so much pain. Anyways, fast forward, come out here, meet these guys. Um, Chad then started having like kind of like some, some health well, issues. Well, I, I was... So you can rewind me because I had been diagnosed with GERD like oh, yeah. uh, nine years ago. And I, I had been on medicine for my GERD. But and I always thought, look, I always thought that I was uh, I ate mm-hmm. clean, you know, until this happened. So like I, I was on GERD medicine for nine years and they told me that I'd never be able to get off of them because uh, because they're proton pump inhibitors and it messes up your it, it, they'll never they'll never function right again so go ahead tell them well so then um my husband listens to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts and stuff and so then when i'm out here that's what i'm doing too if i'm getting a shower and getting ready whatever yeah. you know so he hits me up and he goes you need to listen to this one i think you'll like it and it was gary brecca on joe rogan and so i listened to it and then after being with you know the chad and shane have just turned into like my brothers right listening to like con- kind of like what's been going on i shoot it to our our group text and i was like yo you guys check this out listen to it 
Chad ends up listening to it. And I don't know, it it definitely like hit a spot, hit a spot with yeah. him because, and this is what I appreciate about Chad is like similar in the sense of zero to a hundred like a motherfucker yeah. like if he's doing something he is doing it yeah. till the wheels fall off and it doesn't matter if he's going to crash into the wall or whatever if he's feeling it and he thinks it's correct and he wants it he's going after it so then all of a sudden i swear it was like the next morning he came in like a whole other person with okay everything i gotta change organic i've been eating wrong i thought i was eating healthy i haven't and so then he just went on this like massive which was inspiring to me because i you know i try to be as healthy as i possibly can and then seeing him i'm like okay all right i'm gonna step up my game too and so he went on i mean how long has it been now it's been like uh probably like two and a half months it's awesome yeah, yeah. and now he's not on his medication it's amazing I'm off all medication. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure's back to normal. See, it's crazy, right? It's crazy Fucking because he was over, going like Western yeah. medicine. Dude. He was going to the doctor, like literally, like as once it a was week. Going, yeah, like this shit was like it was yeah. like not going away. It was scary. You know what blew me away? Um, so I got off all the colitis meds, mm -hmm. and then when I got the, um, I healed myself after the stomach surgery. Um, I was trying to tell people. You know, your food is your frequency. It's oh, sure. it's if you if your food's off and like ah whatever. And I said I'll I give know. you. And this one guy said to me, "Why do you stretch so much?" I said, "I'll tell you why." I said, "Let's just say you wake up in the morning with a sore back, mm -hmm. and you don't address it by stretching it out. Everywhere you go, everyone's a pain in your back and a pain in your ass, <laughs> right?" pain in my neck you've got, right, right? ah <laughs> if you've got a headache, mm -hmm. it's not the person that's in front of you at the grocery store. Sure. You've got a headache. So you're projecting what you are onto the world, right? Yeah. So if I can clean this out and I can connect correctly, right? Mm -hmm. And let my intuition and that source energy take me, mm -hmm. right? I will connect with the right people because I'm open because we God works, whatever, through people, For right? Sure. All right. So I was trying to explain to someone, I said to my wife, I'm going to do an experiment. She said, what? Now, I eat super clean. I fast 16, 18 hours a day. Sure. Right? I yep. am meticulous with my food. I went to Hawaii last year and I ate clean and I was just, I couldn't walk from the inflammation. Really? Yeah. And it was just all the oils and they say yeah. they're clean. It's not yeah. right. We went to Europe, sent my wife, we went to Nice and I'm watching these people. And in Australia, I never have gut issues. Okay. Never. Interesting. Didn't grow up with gut issues. Yeah. New York, America, stress, yep. cocaine, all this all other stuff. Things. Right. But there is in the genetic, it's part genetic and part environment. Yeah. I'm watching these people eat pizzas. Yeah. Pizzas on it. You know, motherfuckers, yeah. I want to eat a pizza. So I said to my wife, I'm going to test this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to test yep. this food in Europe. She said, all right. So I literally go to this place, this pizzas. I said to yeah. him, can I check your bathrooms out? He said, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm like, if oh, I'm going to yeah. die, gonna, I'm yep. going to die in a Smart. nice bathroom. <laughs> right. <Smart. laughs> I'm going to, yeah. I know there's Mike Diamond, the plumber in LA, <laughs> but I'm about to do some yeah. plumbing on your shit. Right. <laughs> I ate a whole oh, pizza. Shit, there is. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a commercial. It's not me. It's not me. You're not the plumber. I'm not. Damn, dude, this is the wrong guy. We were we were supposed to be podcasting Mike Pot. The only reason they had me on is because they want the toilets fixed. Yeah, Jesus, wrong Mike Diamond. Oh well, you're good. You're doing good. So you brought us a book. Yeah, great. So I come back to the table and I eat the whole pizza and we go for a walk. And then I get back to the the where we we're playing Airbnb. It was a little gassy, but nothing. Sure. I went every day. Burgers, fries, yep. snails, yep. pasta, pizza. Yep. I was taking bread and <laughs> dipping it yep. in oil. I'm part Italian, right? Yep. I came back the same way and no gut issues. I'll tell you the same thing. My husband and I did the so same. So she's got celiac disease, right? right? We did so the same, and massive here. gut issues. Did right. the same gosh dang experiment. We went to Spain. We went to Colombia. And... Uh, we were eating literally <laughs> like like pigs, right? Pigs, yeah. like deep fried, like pizzas, cheese, <laughs> like everything that you can, can can think of. I was eating bread like a crazy person. I was actually it was 2021 when we went to Colombia and we did this little experiment, and I was still in the WWE. And in WWE, you basically are wrestling in a bikini, right? And you have to watch your weight. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yep. Um, and I came back two pounds lighter, yeah. no gut issues. And I was like, you know what, America? Fuck you. See? Fuck. Right you. or wrong. That's literally. Right or wrong. Yeah. Dude. The and you food. know. Sorry, go yet. No, no, no. The, you're, Spot on. The food. The food. Killing Here's me. the other part, too, yeah. though. It's like everybody's always like, hey, uh, but but it's expensive to eat like that. It's actually not. No. It's uh, First off, let's start with 
the fact that I don't need to eat as much food because that's I'm eating true. food that's actually nourishing my body. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I spend less on health care. Correct. For sure. And your mental health. My, Definitely. My mental health is Definitely. fucking top notch. Yep. I feel like I feel better right now than I have felt in a long yep. ass time. She's got no inflammation. Um, no inflammation. Yeah. None. That's what's killing us. And it's yes. not just like the gut inflammation. No, it's the body. The inflammation it's the mind. in my everything. in my knees are everything. gone. The uh, you know I do cold plunge too. Yeah. I, I'm about the whole. I'm about that whole life. We have to that whole life. Look, if you look totally. at it right, let's go back. Let's say people start to one hundred percent. People yep. talk about like the Stoics, right? Yeah. Or, or yep. early early Christ. You want to or Buddha, whatever you sure. want to talk, right? There is a consciousness that ran through these guys. Now, we we discovered the book Meditations yeah. from Marcus yep. Aurelius, mm -hmm. but we discovered it 100 years after he died. Yeah. Right? He's a Roman leader talking about daily rituals, routines, watching your vices. Great book. Right? Socrates was poisoned, right, because he wanted a free-thinking state. He wanted to make people clear thinking, you know, rituals. Everything's about rituals and routines. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you don't have your health, right, physical health, you don't have emotional health, you don't have intellectual health, right? You don't have spiritual health. Yeah. Right. This country cuts corners. Big time. Instant gratification. We sit there, scroll. Look, there was the greatest thing. I, I blew me away. Someone said to me the other day, I always walk. I walk. I process, yeah. I think, I'm walking. Always walking, always stretching, always moving. I don't care how, and I, when we were talking about the stuff you said, motivation is a lie, mm -hmm. right? Movement is medicine, True. okay? Both my grandmothers lived to 100 years old. They were always moving and cooking and around community yeah. and moving. They were positive and they didn't have vices. Both my grandfathers died of alcoholism younger than them because they were stuck with their vices. My grandmothers were powerhouses, right? If you get up every day, right, and you move your body correctly, people don't know this. They did this experiment. They got a group of people and they made them sit down on computers and it was only for seven minutes a day. Their, their testosterone and, and everything dropped and their cortisol went up. Mm -hmm. They took the same group and they said, just go for a five-minute walk. They tested their testosterone. It went up 30% and their cortisol went down 30% by just walking five minutes a day. Now, Tony Robbins, everyone laughs at him. He always says, you know, open up your body, mm -hmm. imprime yourself. If you get up every day, no matter how you feel, because all we have is this moment. Yeah. Yesterday's dead, right? Yep. Tomorrow's a mystery. We're sitting right here. And I go, I am going to make an empowering choice right now by getting inside myself, breathing, being positive, eating good foods, and you just stay in the moment and do it, that's the new habit, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have a great life. You're making empowering choices. But people are waiting for the next opportunity. There is no, there, it's now. If I don't make empowering choices now, there is no future. Mm -hmm. This is the future. The now is the future, right? Mm -hmm. And people forget, I'll get around to it. You know, you've already gone. There's no getting around to getting healthy. It's now. <laughs> it's right this second, right? It's what I do. Like we were talking about sobriety. Yeah. I tell people it's not 18 years. It's this moment. Totally. If I'm a dick right now, it don't all everything else went out the door, right? And what you said is like people in this country are looking for a quick fix. Exactly. It doesn't exist. And that's the problem. And that's why we're in the state we're in is because people are searching for first of all i don't really understand where this bill of like happiness is where it's at because happiness is is fleeting it, it comes and it goes and everybody wants to be happy and like wake up happy it's like i don't know what fairy tale that you're living in but that's just like not how humans are like i want to wake up disciplined that's yeah. what makes you happy because that gives you self that's purpose and that's that's going to drive the happiness that people I feel like are looking for because what it what to, and this could be you know my own thing but what makes me happy is when I'm so self-disciplined in all of the things that I know that I should be doing because that gives me self-esteem self-esteem then gives me confidence confidence then gives me able to be open and joyous to other people and me inviting and being able to step into those opportunities instead of like a shut off angry cold-hearted bitch 
that's what happens when I'm doing those types of things. But all it requires is the discipline to do it. People want a pill. People want. I. W- I mean, I did. I definitely searched for that pill Just for a so very you long guys time. Know, that was a real. Those are, uh, <laughs> no, but what you're saying. So, so let's let's unravel that, right? So you like, we live in a world, mm-hmm. right? And you'd know this if you've been WWE. Yeah. You know this are your own treatment centers. I'm in the entertainment business. Yeah. To compare our lives with someone else's. Of course. And now. Right. right? Amplified. With the phone. Right. So if I don't think I'm enough. Yeah. Totally. Right. Then I go outside myself yes. to look for something external to make me enough. Right. Yes. To fill you up. Right. So self-discipline. You said it. The most important thing. And it was written by Viktor Frankl. Man's Search for mm-hmm. Meaning. Purpose. Right. Totally. Once you have a purpose, so I always tell people, we all have different inclinations. Souls with spirits having a human experience for a very short period of time. We're in this human experience, yeah. right? It ends. It's impermanent. My sole purpose is to use my talent that was given to me by our creator to bring value to you. I don't need money for that. If I bring value to you, And I serve you with my purpose and those skills that I acquire because I'm really good at it. Mm -hmm. You pay me for what you value. If the cause is right, the effect is money. There's no shortcut to that. So it doesn't matter what I did yesterday because every day is fresh, Mm -hmm. right? So if I get up today and decide never to read, never to write, never to do anything, my life ends. My life ends right when I don't have self discipline. Mm -hmm. So what people are doing is going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I if I cut all these corners, right? Yeah. They get tricked thinking they're going to find happiness. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we then we're searching because it's novelty, right? It's part of the evolutionary brain, right? We're always and then the hardest thing is the tribe, right? If you leave the tribe and follow your calling, you think you're not going to survive, and that's all bullshit. Mm you got to find a new tribe. Oh, for sure. So what you said about self-discipline, right, and what you said about not cutting corners, that's the work that people don't want to do. For sure, because it's hard. It's and I don't, and difficult I don't, every day. And I don't want to do it. I don't want to. No. Every no time. It's so I, I'm, crazy. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Every time <laughs> when I leave the gym, I love the gym. The gym is probably the easiest thing for me. Um, and I know it's not that way for everybody, but, yeah. like, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, the gym. But every day when I get in my car after the gym and I'm driving to the cold plunge, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do I, 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 but I just go and because I know once I get there, once I get in the parking lot and I get out of my car, there's another lady in there at, at the same time every day with me. And like, she's already in the coldest cold plunge and, and, and she's like going for 10 minutes. I'm like, I can get in. Yeah. And the benefits that I get the the not just all of the physical stuff, but the mental yeah. Yeah. that you get from that discipline. It's so far beyond what people realize, because there's also besides the fact that you get a dope dopamine surge. Oh, you do. Yeah. Uh, that's like cocaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is like probably the reason why I keep coming back. It is. Right. But the, just the mental fact that I did, did what it. I told myself I was going to do. Yeah. Um, that's a win. And see, I, I posted something today, like a little thing in, in it. And I, you know, I stole it from uh, Inky Johnson because Inky Johnson says it all the time. I think he's amazing, man. It's like, it's like, um, you know, commitment is doing what you said you would do yes. long after the feeling that you set it in yep. has passed. That's brilliant. You know, it's like, True. Uh, and that, but here's the thing. And, and once you can really like identify that statement, like I don't just like get excited about shit and make a commitment because when I do that, mm. sometimes that feeling passes. Mm-hmm. So like I don't make decisions based off of feelings anymore. Like you and I could feel, feel really good and be like, totally. dude, Let's fuck. We're going to karaoke tonight. Like, yeah. I mean, Shane did yeah, that. Yeah, man. That's yeah, why yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah. about Shane this yes, morning at the smart. gym when I posted that. I was like, he got so excited about like we uh, uh, Macy from uh, Teen Mom was on and she was like and she likes to do karaoke. And Shane was like, we're going to karaoke tonight. And, and I was like, that, I'm that, not going to karaoke yeah. tonight. I was like, He's like. Fist bump us all. (laughs) Yeah, but he was just. uh, He was like making commitments for us that I wasn't like willing to like. It was in the midst of a feeling, you know. 
<laughs> but you just nailed it. And I always say to people, success and failure. A successful person in any endeavor mm -hmm. can do the work no matter how they feel. Of course. Unsuccessful people are always looking to feel good, feel right in the right time. Mm -hmm. There is no right time. There is now. The reason someone can't turn a dream into actual reality is very simple. We don't know the person we're going to have to become, mm -hmm. right? And the exactly. adversity they're going to have to 100%. face to take that idea and turn it into our life. Yep. And as soon as we face, because we have this plan, right? Oh, it's going to go this way. It's going to go that way. It never goes as planned. It can't Ever. go as planned because God has a different plan to what we do. Yeah. So it's that commitment every day mm -hmm. to know how to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I, Dr. Humerman just actually yep. said um, in his most recent podcast that it's actually neuroscience. What happens to you when you tell yourself um, to, going do to do the things you know. that you don't want to do that are hard. So it's like if you hate going into cold water because you have the fear of, of drowning or something, right? Sharks. Uh, or something. And you make yourself do that. I can't remember the actual term, but it's, it's, it's like a, a science in our brains that it – amplifies and helps that intensify so oh, yeah. you're building it however the moment that you don't do it just with anything that we are talking is, about which is back right it goes back yeah. so hence why addict 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 yeah. daily we have to work on it and yeah. when he said it because he used the re addict re reference i was like so true brilliant. but because a lot of times, you know, especially with a normie, it's very difficult for them to understand, like, you know, you're celebrating 18 years. I'll be celebrating 11. You'll be celebrating eight, um, yeah. seven, um, where people <laughs> they don't get it. They don't they don't. They're like, don't you got it now? Like after a decade, you know, it's like, you know, you you don't have to go to a mini meeting. Don't but you but after here. But that's after a, that's an addict's famous last words, because like, you know, what, guys, I got just, it. just from, yeah, I just, know just. And this is from personal experience, man. I've gotten it before. Me like, too. I was like, dude, I got this. listen to I'm me. I'm graduating. I got <laughs> yeah. this. I will oh. never use again. I got this. <laughs> it's fucking back the fuck off. Yeah. yeah. And that's where it starts. Yep. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You didn't have it. I got that shit. Oh, yeah. You got yeah, it you got right. It. Yeah, I, got, I got it got right yeah. in the fucking ass. Yeah, right? I took the cocaine. The cocaine yeah. took me. For sure. Yeah. Like, fuck it. But it makes sense in the sense of, like, we have to continuously work at this daily. If we don't, our brains chemically and all all of the things go right back as if we never you, thought. You know, part of that is That's uh, part, part of that, though, sure. like, you know, is it's, it's really important in the in the disciplines. But, you know, like you can take this stuff to, to normal people too. man. Normal people need to, uh, you, you know, find these same uh, ha uh, habits, uh, rituals and disciplines. Right. They, they, it's it's mandatory. I feel like they know for, for they don't it, know. I feel like some of them do and they just don't give a fuck. That's why. Why do you think all those motivation? How many sellout have we been to that we know of or our acquaintances or friends? People purchase their hard earned money to go get an inspirational talk. To go get motivated, motivated for a, and it's like to go get motivated. No, no, no. For for, for fuck. Like you know what to do. You get you are some. lazy. You do not want to put in the work because it's fucking hard. And right. you're gonna get told no. You're gonna get turned down. You're gonna lose money. Yep. You're going to get all of the things you're going to be told by people that you love that you can't do it, especially if it's a dream that's kind of a, a little bit bigger than the than the average person. Yeah. And you can't hang and you can't handle that. And it'll the be the people closest to you that 100%. tell you that shit because like it's your mom, your yes. dad, your sister. You know what? We Our you family, can't. our family just doesn't. That's not in the cards. Oh, for my our parents family. will never read my books. But no. you know what? My dad asked me, asked me if I have a job. I'm like, I'm on the TV show Intervention, pulling <laughs> kids out of crack houses. No, I don't have a job. Sitting in the back of a fucking, like what, down in the river with the Chris Farley van in the river. Yes, I have a job. <laughs> I get called on really big keynotes and make a lot of No, I don't. You know what's really crazy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. But right. that's, that's amazing in the sense of you're able to still do what you want to do <clears> because you're like, and what people, I'm on the other hand where my ideas and, and things that i've ever wanted to do have always been so far-fetched and so far out there that my parents just kind of are like 
you go do if you want it bad enough if you you get what you put into something and so they've always been like that to me so when i say something outrageous they're just kind of used to this by now you know in the sense of i mean did they really think their daughter was going to be a wwe superstar Fuck. i'm gonna go no. wrestle yeah. i'm gonna go wrestle in yeah. the wwe exactly yeah, yeah right it's so cool but it's but it, what's cool is that like you don't have that you no. didn't have that but but the point is is like you have the vision I have the vision. Yeah, I just he do it. has the vision. Nobody else because they can't see it. It's not in their head. Well, do you think it's this? So what I think is that some see people. It takes a lot of courage, to, you know, like the, the hero's journey. Joseph Joseph Campbell. Sure. You have to leave the environment. Yeah. You have to figure it out. Right. Yeah. No one's gonna. This is what I love. See, no one teaches you this. So I was trying to tell someone the other day. It's like if you're given too much comfort, you're given a billion dollars. Sure. That can't save you from yourself. No. You haven't worked on your feelings. You haven't worked on your emotions. That takes work by yourself to know how to manage your sympathetic nervous system and how to stop the thoughts racing. Yeah. That's a personal thing. You have to do that alone. You have to sit with yourself. You have to look at your defects. You have to look at your yeah. assets, your liabilities, right? You have to come up short. And if you're if you're not, if you're protected in that, you're screwed. You're fucked. You're screwed. Right? Okay. Now, so you go out into the world and and, and it do, and this is what people don't get as well. So let's just say you don't like my son is pretty much set up in the sense I have one kid, you have one, yeah, okay, and he gets all the information. Like he's got all the books. I know. I look at his inclination already. I can tell he's really good at art because that comes in my genetics. He's great in front of people. I get reports back. Conscientious, kind, hugs people, loves people. He comes to my book signings. He gives out the books. He talks to people. Right, he's already got that social thing I've taught him, but he likes people because I take him everywhere. He mm -hmm. talks to people. If it's a homeless person, I might give them a dollar. They don't have a home. You have a home. Okay, that person doesn't have a home. And then he's going to get the education I never got. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get the mentors I never got. And he's going to be able to come to me and thrive because I never had an environment to thrive. So I set myself up in an environment to thrive. Mm -hmm. So even when I work with an addict... I get them out of that environment and I give them an environment to thrive and I remove the disempowering beliefs mm -hmm. and I replant them with what they need to, to survive, right? And make them thrive. So if you look at any task, let's just say you're aligned with what you believe is your task mm -hmm. and purpose and you are and I am. Anyone can learn anything and this is where people mess it up. See, there's four stages to learning. You're unconscious and you're incompetent. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's hard. That's a reality check. So most people quit out. Then you become consciously incompetent. That's hard and messily. Now you're like, shit, there's so much I have to learn. You've already lost 50% of the people there. Say there's 50 to 60% left. No, say there's 40% left. You become consciously competent, right? Most people stay there. You're not there yet. Until it becomes an unconscious competent. Unconsciously competent, it's ingrained as a habit into your subconscious mind. If you're talented enough, to become unconsciously competent at a skill, right? That's aligned with your purpose and your talents. And you can work every day and you apply the 24 hour rule, which is if you win for 24 hours, you celebrate for 24 hours. If you come up short for 24 hours, you reset because you only get 24 hours and stay in the process. You can always thrive and you'll always flourish, right? Because you'll always de-weed and stay in the process. Mm. most people become unconsciously competent. They do, but it may not be their calling. So you can become really skilled at something, but until you've got to master something. See, I'm, I can write, right? I studied with a great writer to write. I am not Stephen King. I cannot articulate myself the way Stephen sure. King can, right? But I can write solid books. But if I said, I'm going to write like Stephen King, that's called optimistic delusional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much work I do. It's not my skill. Now, Stephen King doesn't relate to people like I do to do interventions or speaking. He can't. That was in my DNA. That's in my DNA to, to be that, get up and be confident. That's, I was born with that. So as long as I work within that and do the skills and the reps, you've obviously got it in you because you couldn't do the WWE yeah. if it wasn't in you. So you pulled it out of you, right? Now it's repetition. Mm -hmm. Now it's becoming unconsciously competent that you tap into that when the stage lights go on, when you have to focus, right? You couldn't run that many treatment centers if it wasn't an unconscious competence. No. It's in your DNA. I, I wouldn't even think of opening that many treatment centers but I can do hundreds of interventions and not sure. think about it. Do you see what I'm saying? Then that's the work. 
That's the work of the competence. Sitting with it, I know I'm good at this, and that's where most people get lazy. Floyd Mayweather never has to throw another jab again. The first thing he does is throw a jab. Do you see what I'm saying? It's the, it just becomes that ingrained. But then it kind of piggybacks on your what you're saying is like finding your purpose. Yes, because all purpose. It's like you know sinking in, and and obviously you're gonna go through bouts of that. But like once you find that purpose that to glue. ignites yep. everything that you're talking about, then you're unstoppable. It, yes. Well, because then you're passionate about your purpose. Everything. And guess I, why? I, when you I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I I wonder why people can't find their purpose. You know that I that's that's. Try hard I I don't think they try like. You know what it is more. though. They get so people get so focused on the destination of the purpose, and 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 they you know you can think in your mind like for instance you think in your mind I, I want to open a treatment center I or the podcast is a better one for me right because this this isn't this isn't something that I would normally do I don't I I was I was head down after my relapse it, you know everybody in the industry knew I relapsed it was embarrassing. It was it was it was rough. I just wanted to put my head down. I wanted to I wanted to get back into the grind of running treatment centers. And on 9-11 of 2022, the reason why this podcast exists is because I got a phone call from my 21 year old daughter that she had just found her fiance dead from fentanyl. Jesus. And um, I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, still a little touchy every once in a while there. But um, it. uh I decided at uh, shortly after that that uh, you know God's purpose was was for me to be the voice of people who had yeah. lost their voice and that I wasn't going to let his death be in vain and that I was going to be the one that spoke out mm -hmm. uh, for these parents who who can't man it crushes you yeah. you know his parents both of his parents he was their only son he was only mm. twenty six years old he they don't have any more children you mm. know and. Uh, what was my point? My my, my point. Oh, my, I want to go back to the purpose. podcast. Yeah. Like the, the purpose. Like I was like, when God put it on my heart, and God was like, Chad, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna start a podcast. And I was like, okay. But I, you know what? I never thought during when when I was told to start a podcast that I was gonna actually have to sit here and do my first podcast. <laughs> it's like great. Right. It's great. Or have a studio yeah, or great. like mics and equipment. Yeah, and, it's great. Yeah. And then the st and then all of a sudden the podcast studio was built and it was nowhere near as, as lavish as it is now. It was a table. It was three microphones. Uh, that window you could see everybody walking back and <laughs> forth. Um, but it's so great. And it was done. And my first podcast was was my daughter that found her her fiance dead. And I I got out of the car that day and all of a sudden I was like, holy fucking shit, yeah. Chad. You don't you don't know how to do a podcast. Uh, you don't even like to speak in public. Uh, you suck. And I was like, <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I told myself. And I was like, oh man, you gotta do it. And I was like, fuck it. I just I'm just gonna do it. Whatever. A couple hours before the podcast, I had a full blown panic attack, and I left and I got myself back together and I came back and we did the podcast and Shane and I and my daughter we crushed it. But see, isn't that, and this is why it's so great, right? So we transform ourselves by looking at the transformation of others. Mm -hmm. When someone has the courage, like what you just said, right? Or what you've gone through mm -hmm. to be a star on the WA, uh, WA, right? People don't know what you've gone through, sure. right? But the vulnerability, like you saying that, see, I was honest. I'm like, I can get, I've always been able to get up in front of people. Yeah. But if someone can't, I bring it out of them. Yeah. I don't go, I no, I'm like, no, 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 no. Cause I can't sit there like you and run treatment centers. I don't. I, I yeah, and I suck at interventions. But man. you see what I'm saying? But, uh, no, no, no. For but, real. No, but see what I'm saying? Like I'm the guy's really probably gonna get get loaded if I'm coming. Right, but that see that, but that's awareness. No, but that's such a no, great it, totally. So, do you see what I'm yes. saying? Like I didn't want. Look, I yes. can tell people straight. I can tell you straight. I did not want to do interventions. Right, and when I see people fucking them up, my auntie, when I was 18 years old. I went and saw my mentally ill older cousin and she offered me a lot of money. She's very wealthy. She's no longer with this. And she said, we will pay you. You're done for the rest of your life. Take care of him. I said, I can't. I'm going to move to Sydney and I'm going to move to America. In 1999, I was in the club business still doing TV shows and she saw me and she had cancer and she, I was helping her in New York with family and stuff. And she said, I didn't want to put it on you, 
back then, but I'm, I'm telling you this, I don't, I'm not going to try and curse you. I'm going to die. You have to work with people. It's your calling. You, forget it. You were designed to work with people. This is just your call. You know how to do it. So when I started doing interventions, right, I was working with a top interventionist and I was supposed to, she was supposed to be like this. She was the worst interventionist I've ever seen. Mm. Right? And I mean, when I mean. What's her name? I, I can't do that. I will never do that. I'm but I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah. We were doing an intervention and she was reading letters, right? And I was like, the kid's not going to go. And I didn't want to be negative. I'm like, he's not going to go. He's not, he doesn't know how to read people. She's talking at people. I never talk at people. Right. I mean them where they're at. Sure. That's always been my skill to survive. He goes, I'm not going. I just pushed the family aside. I said, I just want to chat to him for five minutes. And we went up into his room. He's sober now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I said to him, what's going on? He's looked at me and he's like, I'm going to tell you a story. I said, tell me. You know, I know he's a little cracked out on yeah. meth and stuff. He's like, we're in a two-story house, beautiful house in the Palisades. He goes, I could jump straight off here and fucking run away. And I said, well, how about this? You jump. I'll take the stairs. I bet you I can fucking catch you in the driveway. And he goes, you're out of your fucking mind. I go, no, you want to jump. I'm taking the stairs. And he's like, I fucking like you. I said, how about this? Let me stay the night with you. And if I stay the night with you, Tomorrow, if you feel like it, let me take you to treatment. Stayed the night with him, walked him into treatment the next day because I met him where he was at. Every intervention I've ever done, right? Mm -hmm. I went and got certified with the Johnson. It works for me. I love direct interventions. I love reading letters. I love making it a spiritual experience. But I've done so many where it's like, my son's missing. Go find him. I'm like, yeah. no problem. Give me the address. I sit him down for an hour. I sit him down and I just let him relax. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm just presenting a better opportunity. How about you give me a chance to let me show you a better way? That's it. Just give it a shot. Mm -hmm. I've detoxed people. I've spent 10 days in a detox with someone. 10 days mm. with someone in a detox Terrible. with a nurse. They come in on 12 hour I shifts. I couldn't do it, but I hey. Yeah. I couldn't no, either. now how's the thing? No, you see what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. If you ask me the truth, I was, run look, 24 years old. I get discovered in South Beach. I arrive there. I've got girls, cocaine, and thousands of dollars yeah, in my but. face, right? It's the best. South Beach back You're in the right. late 90s, right? I've arrived. I'm the fucking man. Do you think I wanted to give that up and hang out with rock stars and do blow and, do, like, and make a ton of money? To go and find people live in detoxes, it's not my work. It's God's calling. Yeah. I did. That's why I tell people I have never advertised to do an intervention. I've never put out there, right? That yeah. cut one eight hundred. Now I'm going actually going to put a website together, which is Mike uh -huh. Diamond can help, right? Seriously, you it's coming out, yeah. and then soon. But my point is, it's like I didn't want to do this. I know I have to do it, and then everything. I if I don't do it, well, if you didn't. I didn't get the book you deals. Be here. No, I didn't get the book deals. You, how do we know you would be dead? I, I'd be dead, but I don't get the book deals. Right. I didn't get the speaking deeds. I didn't get the things if I'm not serving Completely. my purpose. That's it. So what do I do when people say, do you want to do it? I say, no, of course I don't want to do it. I want to lay on the couch and do cocaine <laughs> and eat pizza <laughs> and do dumb shit. I know, man. Uh, that's the one thing. When, right? I, when, when I was on drugs, I could eat whatever I want, oh. whenever I wanted. Right. And I still- and Always I, shredded. And, and Always. I <laughs> like crazy. Always, fucking crazy. always, rip, you know, and I say to people that get upset, I go rip like JC. I'm like, who's JC? I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. JC was ripped, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because that's my husband's he initials and trust oh, me, he eats it up all the time. So but you know what I'm yeah. saying? Anyone that tells me that I'm like, shut up, dude. Look, if you want to ask the truth, I want to snap on people. I want to be of a horse. I want to cut people right? off. I want to push you out of the line. Get the fuck out of my way. Yeah, like I got shit to do. Oh, oh. I'm motherfucking Mike Diamond. Yeah. You know that shit. I ain't yes. the fucking plumber. Yeah. I'll do some plumbing <laughs> on your ass. I ain't the Beastie Boys, motherfucker. <laughs> fuck you. That's what I want to do. And then I come back to reality and I take a breath. I'm like, you're being a dick. It's completely. Because it's like... That's why, you know, it's so weird. And like in hindsight, you know, for a long time, and I've said, I said this yesterday too, and I'm sorry, Chad. Um, for the longest time, I was so like embarrassed and ashamed that I was an addict and I had to work a 12 step program, all of this stuff, right? Poor me, wo woes me. It's like, dude, nobody cares. Um, but then all of a sudden, fast forward in my life and, and 
you know, looking back, you're able to see certain little avenues. So it's like, you know, soccer was my sport. I loved it. Uh, played through college and then that didn't work out for me, but it prepared me because it instilled all the, this discipline and athleticism to provide me into walking into WWE when I never wrestled in life, except for like, you know, fucking around with my brothers. So then season one, then I, God gave me total divas, which is the, the reality show yeah. on E and I, I quickly came to making sure. And I talked to my husband and my family and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to come out and, and take my narrative of me working a 12 step program and me being in recovery before anybody else does, because then, you know, it removes the power from them and it puts it to me. It's my story. And it gives the power to Nem. Hell yeah. You like it? And I like that. We call her Nem. And I like that. And Nem Nem likes power. (laughs) Um, So who would have thought me doing that? Fast forward 10 years later that I would walk in just as a merely guest on a podcast in Orange County where I used to live with two guys that I don't know to talk about one, my sobriety. And then all of a sudden now I'm a co-host and also working with chad and the infinity group uh, it's literally Amazing. a dream to me yeah. i wrote it down like 10 years ago on like a vision of wanting to work in treatment because i always felt like um but if you asked me this i would have said fuck no like there's no way but if you're willing and open and you go through those opportunities like you were talking about crazy things don't happen. you think it's magical but like even back to you right so if you look at guys like let's say steve jobs sure he started started apple in his garage yeah some pretty crazy shit yep. when it comes from an idea let's do this is the ceo and gets tossed out yeah goes and takes these other classes right and then starts pixar does the animation goes back <laughs> ends up running the company do you look at that right yeah yeah when you look at your life yeah and you look at your life and i look at my life and it's like i'm sitting on the tv show intervention right, right? and i was like well you know 2005, six, I was shooting a show about myself. Mm -hmm. I went to acting school. I know how to act. I learned how to do interventions. I know how to direct. I know how to write. I do all these things. And now I'm doing a show that's actually purpose-driven. Not the show that I would have chosen. If you would have told me in a crystal ball. Yeah, you would have been like, hell. But all that experience had to get me to this point. Totally. Like you're saying, right? And it's, I think that's the beauty of us having a real conversation is that we all know our strengths and weaknesses. Right. People don't want to talk about that. I am never going to be as good as you, right? <laughs> so good at um at running a center. you right. you you know how to look yes. at a business and go. Actually, no, we're going to do it fifteen different ways. No, no, that's wrong. The insurance is wrong. This yes. is wrong. You're wired that way, and that's brilliant. And then you've got this ability as well because you forward think. You don't even think about it, but you could see yourself in those positions, and you're vulnerable. And you're a really good influencer. And when I was even watching the podcast, watching you, I was like, wow, she's a great role model Mm -hmm. for young girls, like, and young girls that, that, you know, because you get over criticized, you know, and people sit there, but your vulnerability is natural. You don't don't look at you and go, oh God, here's another girl. No, you know, some people, you're very, very vulnerable. It was like, wow, she's really centered and real. Thank you. You know, and I could see that because you don't know, you hear wrestling. You don't know. Of course. You know, and it's like it's soap opera on uh, heights. But, but on, it's very I, athletic. Of course. Right? But yeah, I didn't I just, know. I just got to throw it out there, though, that, she, you know, Shane and I keep her, her you know, her ego down. <laughs> <laughs> you do that immediately. I love this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Two fucking guys. But it's like that's Two what introverts. No, actually, Shane doesn't look like an introvert. He's oh, not. no. He is, Fuck but he's no. not. No. He's like an he extrovert is, introvert. Especially when the camera comes on, Jonas. all of a sudden it's yeah, like. Yeah, he goes crazy. Yeah, he's he's like, he's actually, <laughs> Shane, he's actually our, our diva. He I probably, liked him. I, I'm like the like, biggest diva, it. like when it comes to like, I'm like, oh God, can you please change the lighting? Why is this like this? I'm like that. He's like the different diva. You're a detailed diva. Yeah. Right. He's like, oh. As soon as, uh, as soon as the camera comes on, he He'll like literally push Natalie out of the way, and she's the one oh, supposed yeah. to be in the front That's of the great. camera. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's awesome. honestly, I'm Shane. Yeah, but I love, but like talking about this stuff is that, and I think what's important for people to understand yeah. is that, and the problem with social media is that you're supposed to find your 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 sure. worth, and it's not outside of us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then be a good person, and be kind, yeah. and be compassionate, and help people. Yeah. We all help each other. We're all here to help each other and be good humans. It's actually everybody's purpose. It, Seriously. It's, just, right? it is. it's not like it, rocket science. Be a it's good like, fucking person. Yeah. And I tell you, at the end of the day, 
I don't want to do interventions, but God called me, and that's why I do them. Because and you're good. I could see why why you are. I mean, so geez, good at sometimes it. he t he can he can really he's got the gift of gab too. So like, well, I, if I was if I was like on meth, I'd be like, fuck, dude, come on, I'm going. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is. Do you work for the FBI? No. Okay. Let's go. It is a gift because usually when an intervention is happening, it's usually not the best moments in the sense of the no. family and the person and things are getting crazy and they're getting talked at. They're getting yelled at. People are crying. It's just, it's not a good environment. So like you're able to come in and just be like, what's up? Well, hey. you, uh, uh, let's do this, right? We're all sitting here and this is what people You'll understand, you'll understand. It's comfortable. Totally. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Energy yeah. Yeah. is contagious. Completely. Yeah. Right? If we walk in a room and you felt me, your amygdala, your sympathetic nervous system, the primitive yeah. part of survival is going to trigger and go, oh, I don't feel good. Yeah. You know when you get around some people, right? You're like, uh-uh. <laughs> so true. Whoa. Now, that person unconsciously doesn't even know it. They're projecting all that shit they don't work on onto the person. Yeah. So if there's a bias in me when I'm doing something mm -hmm. or around someone, people pick up the bias. Sure. And the, the instantly, I don't want to be here. I heard this incredible thing one day from this person. They said, when you really center yourself and work on yourself before you go out in the world, you should have the ability to be so calm that when you're around people, you allow their chaotic nervous systems to unwind. Mm. That makes sense. So when you're in the presence of someone that's really calm with you, you're like, I can just be myself. Yeah, I can relax. Right? So the trick is, it's not just saying to people, meet them where they're at. It's actually meet them where they're at energetically. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get into that, that's real rapport. That's unconscious rapport. That the person goes, I'm safe, man. I'm yeah. I'm going through some crazy shit, but this is unconditional. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be here. This person actually is safe. I might, because all I'm doing is selling a new opportunity. That's it. That's it. That's it. I am selling you a better opportunity and an opportunity to get well. That's all I'm doing. Sure. And when I speak in front of, do you know who um Andy Elliott is? You might see him. Great sales guy, okay. bald guy. He's a, bit, he's a bit, I love him. He's a bit hardcore. He says, if you're fat, you're not going to work for me. Oh, okay. Andy Elliott? Yeah. It says, um, official Elliott. Okay. And, and I went and spoke. I think I like him. Oh, no, he's he great. He's that. hardcore. Okay. And so I met him through a guy called Aaron Williamson. And Aaron Williamson trained The Rock okay. and trained uh, Zach Efron and all these guys. So okay. they said, could you come and speak at our compound? I said, yeah. And the day after, um, they had like Tim Grove and all these guys. Loved him. So I was yeah. speaking in front of sales guys, right? And I was like, cool. So I was, I'm hardcore. I do, I do a little bit of my story and give them practical tools. Yeah. And I said, okay, if you guys, you guys are top sales guys. He goes, yeah. And I said, who's a top sales guy? The guy put his hand up. He's doing millions of dollars. I said, okay, if you don't get a sale tonight, what is it? Are you with your wife? He said, yeah. I said, what happens? You go home, you chat to your wife, right? He goes, yeah. I said, okay, if I can't close a sale with an addict, they die. I said, see the difference? I got to be that good. I have to be that poised, I have to be that centered, and I have to build unconscious rapport with someone sick and suffering whose unconscious competence is a drug mm -hmm. and it's a killer. I said, that's the difference. I don't do this work. I so slow down, I do the research, and I allow my creator to work through me. Yeah. I was, I tell people, it's, it's a calling you have, it's just, it's there. Be kind, do it, shut up. I do all the research and then I just let go. Mm -hmm. And whatever feels right intuitively, I present it. Yeah. And it always works yeah. because I just give them space, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's the mastery of it. I've just learned to get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Now, is it a lot of work? Yeah. Of course. If I don't have the rituals, the routines, the cold plunges, the if I'm not journaling, if I'm not yeah. writing, if I'm oh. not stretching, <laughs> I'm blocked. I'm like a it's fucking, true. you know what I mean? You're not doing your part. Like right. Your I'm a squirrel. Through. I'm the same. I'm a squirrel trying to do an intervention. Yeah. It doesn't work. I'm chasing. It's like I have to do all that to arrive at a place where I allow everything to come through. And then it's like, hey, let's just walk into treatment. Yeah. But yeah. the work before it, the prep you do. Yeah. 
right? Before that, the prep you have to do to run the centers, that's what normal is. I mean, that's what another thing that, that is really, really important to, and we've talked about it on the podcast is, is you know, and a little bit earlier in ours as well is about your environment and removing yourself from certain things and, um, or certain people. And I feel like that's really, really important because like even this morning, you know, Chad sent out a group text yesterday and was like, I'm going to be at the gym at five, at 5 a.m. tomorrow, basically just like throwing it out there. But you know, and it, that does it to me and I'm a comp like competition drives Good. me. And so immediately I hit back and I was like, Roger that. Like, yeah, I'll see you there, that's motherfucker. Good. Yes. And that's the that's the point. But that's my tribe. Standard. That's who, that's who I want yes. to roll with. That's yes. who I want to be my ride or die going on because I, I, I don't want I want people to elevate me. Absolutely. And vice versa. Absolutely. Where it's like you're trying to continuously you're on the same trajectory where at a time in my life I surrounded myself with people that you didn't have great to try. people yeah great people um but I liked what they it was comfortable were. it was great all right so here's a perfect example right you're in the WWE yeah. right you how many treatment centers do you own seven seven okay this is where and anyone listening to this this is where people now mess up if I want to be in the WWE, I come to you, I shut my mouth, and I listen to you, and I just <laughs> just get mentored. Mm -hmm. If I want to own seven treatment centers, I take the worst job in your treatment center, I bring you value, and I shut my mouth. Right. Right? And I do the work. Right? Because your ability to do what you do, right, will transfer onto me if I'm willing to do the work. Sure. That's why the environment and who we surround ourselves with, you're only going to get better if he's better, and he's only going to get better if you get better. Right. Oh, and you keep nudging each other, which is what is we don't do anymore. Well, I think it is so important. And that's right. Why I you think have to. You have to. That's why it was like one of those things where usually it happens in my life. And I know for sure it's God. And I love it so much when it happens because it's, it's very rare. WWE happened to be one of them. Total Divas, another one. My husband being one of them. And then the Infinity Group, Chad, Hopeaholics, Shane being another one where when we walked in, we were. Well, I was a guest. My husband was here. We, we, sh you know, had a great interview. They fell in love with my husband. They got stuck with me. I got to meet the rest of the team. It was like instant. You knew. I knew. Yeah. And like, that's best very, feeling. very, very Isn't it the best feeling. You yeah. just, you just smell it. And it was amazing. Like, oh, I'm at home. <clears throat> yeah. It's, a, it it, like it's, it's right. also important though, that people, uh, you know, know that, that like, we all have such a deep spiritual connection that when um, when you have that free from blockage, mm. like that that's where that comes from. That's where the knowing actually comes from. It's a it's a it's an intuitive spiritual connection, and you when you're not blind to it, uh, you're blind, but not you're you're free. Roadblocks start to happen, mm. and people sometimes try to truck through the roadblocks that are actually just say dead end life and and the devil or you know the the the, the opposite force also gives you road roadblocks and you have to be able to tell the difference between which roadblocks come from god mm. and which roadblocks come from the devil Ooh. uh you know um and, and however you want you, you no, know no, whatever yeah, whatever like people's that. gods are i don't yeah. care it no, does no, none of that matters right it's, it's the, the vices like and, you're right exactly yeah, yeah no, you know no, and and, the, and it's easy to tell and I, i'm going to give people a little piece on how you how you tell like when you're on the right path and you're doing uh god's work there's these roadblocks that come in from from the devil man and those ones they they're like they're like these little ones to trick you to yep. get you out of the mindset like oh you can't do that you're never going to accomplish mm -hmm. that i'm going to make this really hard for you uh, ooh, I'm going to give you an insurance audit right now, right when you're growing, <laughs> Seriously, yeah. you know, so you don't have as much money to be able to do, go to this next level. Sure. You so know, true. those are the ones that you're like, you know what? Fuck you. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. I got God on my side and you know what? We're, we, he's got a different plan and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the journey. So you want to bring those kind of roadblocks? Go ahead. Yeah, it's true. And then there's these other road roadblocks that just like they're like they disable they disable your attempt. But that's I also love those ones too because that's God saying, you know what? Not this door. That's so. I got a too. better door for yeah. you over there. 
Yeah, isn't that's that your plan, yeah, that's and it was crappy. <laughs> <laughs> totally, it's so true. so true. I like love that, Emily and Lewis. That's a real. What you just said. Oh, yeah, I love. So watch I this. Love this is a real that. too. This is a blooper. This is for the uh, whoosh, that one right oh, there. Yeah. The, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I know exactly. What is that you're talking you break dancing? You do a blooper? Yeah, we're yeah, yeah we're weirdos. All right. Uh, dude. All right. So how do you want to wrap it up? I, yeah. you I could for. fucking go yeah, on I forever. Know. That's. I'm an interesting I mean, dude. Congratulations. Thank first of all. I didn't come here and I'm like I shit the bed. You know, no, this say, was like amazing. <laughs> this was a, like so much. Yeah, but I messaged it was. You know what's so great as well? So Cherie, you had Cherie on. Yeah. Yeah. She's a real dear friend. And uh, but, and, and I think you messaged. So my wife's cousin, Kevion, real estate even, guy. Oh, yeah. Ke Ke but Kevion's my lawyer's friend. Okay. So he's my wife's cousin. Oh, wow. That's so funny. He's a good dude. Yeah. He's a good dude. How, how long have you been married? Sahar, the uh, one that just no, came out. Eight years. Sahar, eight years Sahar was our, uh, a real just two days ago, and her podcast just dropped Wait, on YouTube. What about and Sahar? Uh, she knows Kevion. Yeah, Kevion's great. Her, he's, good. he's a real estate guy in Costa Mesa. Yeah. Good, good. But it's my wife's, uh, he's like through marriage cousin. Um, what was I going to say uh, about Cherie? You were up there. Oh yeah. So when I message you, and because I don't like to bother, I never like to bother people. And she put us on a group if you want to connect. And I was like, and I I messaged you. I said, hey man, I don't like to bother people, but I'd love to come on the podcast, chat, give you some. Books. Why you totally should. That's the whole point. That's the, that's the power of social media. And I know, it. but I'm very Especially like discreet. So when I text him, and then he didn't text back, and then I was like, hey, I want to talk about. You. Like, dude, I didn't even see your text. I said, no, 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 it's no pressure. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be. You know, how some people are like no, so I desperate know. to be on the podcast and uh, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm I'm totally cool. Yeah. Like whenever you're ready, I work with you. Yeah. Whenever you get back, you know what I mean? Because I like. And then we clicked, but it was like, I hate because there's no, some I know. people. I, I get it too. You know what I mean? I totally it's just get like, it. Like whatever's easy. No, I know. Our schedules just like our schedules gotten crazy, but just because of the treatment center yeah. though, like because we were we weren't messaging on Instagram, you were texting texting me you on my phone. Yeah. 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 And my phone, like I, I'll pick it up right now, and I probably have a hundred and thirty. You got seven text, treatments. So. Text and messages. And that's the thing that's what's so cool is that like yes, we do this, and like this is like our really fun time to to like. Unwind. Unwind and like shoot the shit and, and do what we do. But then on the flip side, like especially now that I'm part of the infinity group, I'm, I'm learning from Chad, from every single person, so from like Catherine, from t from Aaron to Peter. Like, I mean, I went through I walked through a licensing of one of our houses. Like I'm trying to learn the ins and the outs because I don't want to just be it's like amazing. Natalie Eva Murray has a treatment center with Chad Carlson in the infinity group. It's like, yeah, yeah, I do. But I'm so much more than that. I'm not just like slapping my name on a facility and calling it a day. It's like, no, I'm involved. I'm like sitting in groups with patients, um, learning just little things of treatment at homes that have to, you know, that to make compliance is, and with the state and with the city. It's like all of these things that I never knew. I went to rehab. I didn't give a fuck. I wasn't paying attention about shit in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? I was failing my drug tests. So like, <laughs> that's why I think God's so funny is like now I'm here. I'm like in the thick of it. And so it's like really crazy so for like even my husband to watch because it's like, yeah, like I love this. I love sitting. I love having a conversation. I love shooting the shit. But then to actually uh, be in the process, be in the process yeah, and amazing. learning what it takes to run a treatment facility and all the ins and outs from like even transportation, all of these things that people don't really think about to me is awesome. It's fun. Yeah, it's real work. It is. It's fucking special. Yeah. And there's always chaos going you know? on. Yeah. And I love how, um, like, I didn't want to start this website and this guy's you like, should. you need to, and it's going to be MikeDarmanCanHelp.com because most, look, I just do so many interventions, but what I'm doing as well is I'm going to, as long as people have insurance, I'm going to just kind of, I've got some foundations that, because I, I was, I was on this, uh, on the, sh this show for Bloomberg TV and I just, I get tired. Cause I'm lucky. I've got a lot of celebrity clients. They pay me well. Sure. I do a lot of high end stuff. But I watch these families when I do intervention. They can't get a guy like me. And so I was like, well, how do I get them? And they need help. I need yeah. to get. And now these foundations that I connected with were like, wait, wait, wait. We'll pay you through the foundations. Go and help the people. How do you pick which treatment center you go into? Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> so we, that's what I'm saying. We all Lots feed each other. Centers. No, but we feed each other. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? You promote me. I help you. I'm a top individual. But that's why I love. That's why I was like, oh, this is a great conversation. We all help each other. Sure. That's what the world's about. Yeah. Because yeah. I go out and help people. 
and you've got someone that plays it to feel. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I love. This is real how it works. Mm -hmm. I'm out there doing it. I'm on the show. That's how it should work. Oh, it's also funny. Uh, I was, um, is there a brand new season coming out? Yeah, I'm uh, on it. I was. Um, when? Uh, you should say it. When it March dropped. or April. I think March or April? Yeah. Okay. A &E. On A&E, right? A &E. yeah. So uh, I got connected with the, with the A&E intervention show back in, um, it was, I think it, I think I was the first episode of season two. Uh, it was the first. Back, back, back. Yeah. Season Since 2005. Two. Yeah. 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, first episode of season two and then um th since then we've done uh i was 17 before but then with the other treatment centers we're probably over 20 20 plus uh different episodes that has featured one of my treatment centers oh my God, throughout really? the years yeah that's so cool that's incredible yeah oh, so now i know it's yeah you know amira yeah i do love <laughs> amira's amazing right yes. yeah she's the best i mean well i mean and you you know Ken, who was pretty much the founder of the show, he's yeah. Like Ken, a and Ken, Ken, uh, and, and uh, Ken, it used to the original Ken Ken, three was, was Ken, Candy, and Jeff Van Vonderen, mm -hmm. and Jeff Van Vonderen made it into an Eminem song. You guys, uh, it's uh, Monster by uh, oh God, by Eminem. Yes. He says he says uh, so, he he rhymes Van Vonderen with something. Wow. He's like, I need an in intervention. Oh my god, that's pretty cool. Huh? That is pretty. Cool. How badass is that? See, I mean, diamonds saying, too. I, I, diamonds too oh, easy for him. Say like, I, I, like I, I, he's not in the Beastie Boys. He's fucking not cleaning my toilet. He's doing my intervention. I'm fucking out of here. Like, what do I? Say? <laughs> that's what I get. Like you either the have Beastie a super Boys. Name. I know, my, I think. but my son has the best name. Okay, what is it? Orlando Diamond. That's fucking dope. Because you think either Orlando the place, which is cool, or you think of Orlando Bloom. You do think of Orlando Bloom. So, and he's a good-looking kid. My wife's hot. She's Asian and Filipino. Ooh, and he's got nice. my ethnic mix with her. Mm, and he, dude, he's got, he, dude, he walks around like, dude, he tells me, he goes, I'm Orlando Diamond. Um, Are you guys done with one? One and done. Wow. Packed it in. I was like, I can give you one. I can make him magical. Well, you're already gonna like you were on death's door. Yeah, getting I'm one, like so. one and done. You got, and I said to him, you got all my good sperm, son. Yeah. make sure yeah. there's good Flourish. DNA in that. Flourish. You got, there's no competition. <laughs> he has the environment I wanted. Yeah. he comes home, right? He said the best thing the other day. You guys live here or in New York? We live, we live in uh, Glendora. Oh, okay, so, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, this is what the best thing he said. He was frustrated with something. And I was like, dude, what's up? And he's like, I need space. I was like, what? He's like, I need space right now. I was like, oh, I love you. That was so awesome. I wish I had, I wish I could say it to my dad. And he backed up and he just, I gave him time. So on the phone a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I don't get triggered much, but sometimes if someone's gaslighting me, I'll like, oh. I'm like, dude, stop gaslighting me. He goes, dad. I'm like, yeah, mate. And he's like, that's way too loud. And I was like, this little jerk. Like, <laughs> if I, like, I got kicked around. Like, this guy, that's, does, so that's too loud. You need to bring it down. Like, he was checking yeah. me like, we don't yell yeah. in this house. I was like, if you're not a good person <laughs> with the shit that I've done, everyone's calm. He comes home. If he needs space, we give him space. What's going on here? He reconstructs the whole house. I work out of a little corner. He grabs, I'm like, don't touch it. Okay. And I'm like, this is, I live vicariously through him. Mm -hmm. I wish I was him growing up because it was like, no, no trigger. He doesn't get triggered by anything. He's calm because I didn't like, I don't, yeah. I'll go for a walk. And I think I, my wife definitely taught him that, like, I'll give you space or you need space. But I always go and take time if I'm like a little, sure. like, I don't, take it on her because she doesn't understand it she's a normie yeah she knows people i'm dealing with people that are sick and suffering but if i come home from a long detox yeah. or thing she's just like hey did you watch the house i want to watch the housewives i'm like <laughs> i gotta go for a walk yeah. <laughs> right yeah. right so some chick like yelling at another chick on a housewife show no offense but i'm like i'm just dealing with the crackhead yeah you know what i'm so saying trying to jump out of a window yeah like i'm like trying I feel, to get I feel this, like get those off. ladies on the housewives are uh, crackheads you know what i mean but <laughs> i don't want to judge them but it's like it's sometimes no, I, I have Completely. to be so i, I, I should i i take that back we've had a couple of them on one one on the show and she was definitely not a crackhead she's probably one of the most i don't know judge it. i can yeah, watch I it i can watch it <laughs> i can't watch it i don't i don't judge it anymore like i just go it's information it's, it teaches me actually what does it teach you what does the housewives teach i'll tell you anybody? what it teaches me when i see like them say fighting 
or them like acting out or doing something dysfunctional or doing something that's like, wow, mm-hmm. it's more like, I'm more curious. Like what triggered that? What's going on in your life so to be th- so angry? Okay, I'll go. I'll go with my take because oh, yeah. I've been on reality. Yeah, TV, you, you were. So like I kind of understand in the sense of like you have to sell the drama, right? However, this is the one thing that I'm like, damn. And I don't know. I haven't watched The Housewives in years, like years, years. So one, good on them because they're able to um, make a living, right? So their yeah. financial gain is going to be good and their brand deals and things of that nature if they're utilizing them being on the show. However, it gets really weird for me because I'm 40 to see somebody that is married and in their 40s acting like they're 20. That's it, not a question good. for you because I was on a couple of reality shows. I did the ink shows. Okay. They're pretty. Re- we did them real. Obviously, intervention is real. Yeah. It's like you do the yeah, intervention. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you yeah. suck, you're a bad interventionist, right? right? How much do you think is produced in the sense of the story? So, like right. m- the two of us, you, you're married. Sure. Hey, Mike, talk shit to Chad. Completely. How much do you think is baiting? Um, I think I think There's quite a bit. A good amount. Yeah. And it's intensified because some people will play ball. So, like on Total Divas, you know, we had storylines, and then we had some like. Uh, real like obviously, I really married my husband. You really got to see my family. Right, That's why right, reality right, TV does right. so well because they have real elements. Do you really think, um, then your cast members, if you if you all get along and stuff, we'll play ball. Like, oh, Asira, we're doing a storyline. Cool. Well, you're gonna talk shit and be upset, and then we resolve it at the end. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, yeah. The audience on the yeah. on the wave, but. So I, I think sometimes with the, the housewives, like it gets like super real because everybody wants to be the bomb bitch. Everybody wants to be that one alpha lady. And then I think that's where things go. I think it's hard on the kids. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about the kids. That's all. I love people that. get divorced on that show, man. Oh, that's like, what people, I think is. That's what's nuts. It's like, you guys, it has to be kind of to a degree real because people are getting divorced people are having affairs well i think it's like that's, yourself. Thing, that's guys, crazy there's there's, al- there's alcohol flowing through all oh those God, shows right. you know yeah and it's and it's what people say like i knew, remember when i first started talking about sobriety out, out and telling people what i did like yeah. a lot of people in the a community hated me They're like don't talk about that save it for the rooms so i'm like yeah but people need to know what i went through because here's the funny thing i said i was like well, all right i did cocaine i drank excessively everyone knew what i did in new york city I would have people talk shit about me because I was drinking cocaine and being out of my mind, right? Mm-hmm. Yet everyone was feeding it because we we're all doing it. Mm-hmm. Then I get sober and I'm not supposed to tell you I'm sober. Valid point. Right? You told me you, you had no problem checking me when I was drinking and doing coke, right? And no one tried to stop me. So now I go, I'm sober. Oh, no, you're just such a... Oh, look at you celebrating your sobriety. <laughs> well, so are you celebrating me being a crackhead? I, I went to that, <laughs> that too. With, with both, right? with yeah. both like, the, yeah. even the like, AA community being like, oh, you shouldn't really talk about it because of anonymity. But then I finally was like, um, with that, I'm not talking about anybody else. It's your anonymity. It's mine. It's like I I, I talked about, but I don't mention anyone else. Not at all. Right. And, I, and it's like, you know. The, 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 you can say, actually say whatever the fuck you want to yeah. say as long as I don't break your anonymity. Yep. Or you, you, you're you not supposed to say I'm a member of exactly. Alcoholics Anonymous. The, that's you know? it. And uh, I get why. Because I understand to yeah. a degree where it's like then somebody like an idiot. Like but anybody. I can surely say I work a 12-step program. Yeah. That's why I tell people. Totally. I said the 12-step program worked for me. Yeah. And yep. it works for a lot of people. If you want to use cognitive and behavioral therapy, how I mean, want to I mean, put up whatever use you want. It, use, them, the, use, them all. The, use them all. Fucking use them all. Use them all. Try the 12 use steps and you all the other shit too. Because that's that's really yes. that's really where I gained my superpower. Yeah. But damn, you know what? Step 11 or uh, 10, 11, and 12 yeah. is, is where it's at. Yep. Okay. Bro. All right. Thank you. And Thank you. It. Congratulations on your book, on Thank everything. You. I Thank can't you. wait to read this. Thank it's you. absolutely amazing. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you for having me on.